So, welcome to all. I take this opportunity to thank Sangam team and Rahul ji for inviting me to share this knowledge on Linga Jirnodhara. To introduce myself, well, I belong to a renowned Sthapatya Parampara. My grandfather and great grandfathers were illustrious Shilpacharyas who constructed magnificent temples in Coimbatore and uh, Karekudi, that is Chetina region. From my very young age, I had lived in Francophone countries and hence had very little chance to gain in Shilpaic knowledge, the vast Shilpa Shastra. So once my mamaji, my maternal uncle, Padma Bhushan, Dr. V. Ganapati Stapati visited our family where we lived, uh, that is Mauritius Island. And that was a very, uh, how to say, that was a rare opportunity for me to learn a lot from him about the temple tradition and culture. And seeing my patient, Dr. Ganapati Stapati, uh, my mamaji initiated me into this uh, fascinating field of Vastu Shilpa Shastra and myonic science. And uh, he taught me from that day onwards about all the, uh, all about the science and technology of this field. And I married to his brother's son, Sri Selvanathan Stapati, who is a leading uh, temple architect in India and outside India. And uh, afterwards, after I, I came back to India, I started working with Dr. Ganapati Stapati, and I was his close associate uh, in all his profession and research activities, uh, of course, since my marriage to Silvanadanji. So it always remains a pride for me that Dr. V. Ganapati Stapati was my most revered guru from an unbroken lineage uh, of Sthapatya Parampara. And, uh, you know, one of his ancestors, Gunjaramallan Raja Raja Pirandachan, built the great Brahadishwara temple. He was a master designer and architect of Brahadishwara temple uh, and many other stone marvels in the country and outside country, like in Sri Lanka. So if I say Sri Lanka, like temples in Colombo, Sri Punnabalavaneshwara temple and uh, Koneshwaram temple at Trikonamali and uh, Trikedishwaram temple at uh, Mannar. These temples are very famous and uh, uh, very ancient temples in Sri Lanka. And now presently we are running a research foundation in the name of Dr. V. Ganapati Sthapati Research Foundation to propagate this age-old science and technology of Vastu Shilpa and myonic science through various forums. So I thank you. And um, this is uh, my background. I'll show you my Guruji's photo. He's Dr. Padma Bhushan, Veganapati Sthapati, the doyen of Indian Vastu Shilpa tradition. I'm so very proud to introduce him. Yeah. So today, my topic is on Linga Jirno Dhara, the science of restoration of Shivalinga and temples. And before going into Linga Jirno Dhara, I'll, I wanted to uh, tell you what I'm going to talk about. Because Linga Jirno Dhara is a vast subject. And to understand Linga Jirno Dhara, we'll have to see, we have to know more about Devalaya Vastu, the Pan-Indian concept, origin of Devalaya Vastu, the manuscripts, classification of temple construction, image worship, then comes form of Shivalinga, system of measurement for Shivalinga, types of Shivalinga, and then what is Jirnodharam, why Jirnodharam, types of Jirnodharam, Linga Jirnodharam, and its remedial measures, then my concluding note. So let's begin with Devalaya Vastu, the Pan-Indian concept. In all India level, we have got uh, many Hindu temples, monuments, sculptures, uh, which would run into several lakhs. And such a large number of temples built in the ancient period, ancient time, with more significance. And today, these are the testimonies of Indian civilization and culture, and we should be very proud about it. If we take a close look at these temples, I'm sure 
that this that all these temple are endowed with significant aspect which is unique of its kind so in india temple architecture and sculpture is classified under various styles depending upon the period and dynasties our scholars rishimunis historians they have subdivided these multi styles of architecture into two branches south indian style where most of our southern regions are covered and north indian style of temples covering the regions of himalayas to the deccan plateau gujarat and orissa so in spite of all these regional addendum in the style of architecture our ancestors followed pan indian concept in the configuration of temple layout and in the form of temple so let's see what is pan indian concept with reference to vastu shilpa shastra so this is pan indian concept that you can see in the picture here four types of temple architecture dravidian style kerala style gujarat and kalinga styles of architecture and you can see the these temples the sanctum is square in form are rectangular sometimes and the cosmetical features that is the aesthetical part differs to suit the region that the temples are being constructed like you see the dravidian style you have got uh, more ornamental embellishments and uh, architectural uh, features and you see kerala architecture and gujarat and kalinga so all over india we followed the concept of maintaining the sanctum according to the principles laid in vastu shilpa shastram a square or a rectangle a rectangular ra shape which brings the divine being to reside inside the temple now the temple form uh, uh, is considered as god form it is because our shilpis our shilpi rishis have represented the temple parts to a god's physical form uh, that i'm going to show you in the next uh, following uh, slide the standing and reclining forms of a temple the sacred meshes when applied to an enclosed space a selected space when it is enclosed with sacred meshes it becomes the physical form of the god and the energy dwelling inside the built form becomes the divine spirit the godly existence so consequently the built space vibrates it pulsates so we call it as a living organism which means the building the sacred built uh, space breathes in and out inhales and exhales this is the transformation of gross into matter or sukshmam into stolam so it is considered that temple is so in this background it is considered that the temple is not home of god but form of god hence in our kumbhabhishekha ceremony that is consecration ceremony holy water from the yaga shala first anoints the temple vimanam then it is poured on the presiding bimba enshrined within this is explained through the following sloka from manasara as vimanam stula lingam sukshma lingam sadasavam which means the built structure called a vimanam shikar is the stola gross lingam and sukshma lingam the spirit residing the divine being the divine energy residing inside the sanctum in the form of an image is called a sadasama uh, one of the agamas uh, state that prasadam purusham matva pujayet mantra vittamaha meaning that the priest well versed in mantras he looks upon the prasadam the built uh, Uh, uh temple structure as the divine purusha and worship him with due respect like we say in southern region uh vimana darshanam kodi punyam meaning that looking at the vimanam and making a uh, something like a namaskaram itself gives you very good deed so it is like that in our country we look at the sacred built form as form of god now uh, as i explained temple is not home of god but form of god so the shilpis have rendered uh, 
the form of God into a beautiful temple structure corresponding the limbs of human beings, a purusha, to that of the temple. Like you see, temple as a human form in a standing uh, posture and temple as a human form in a reclining posture. So the temple layout uh, is uh, correlated with the purusha reclining form. So this is the uh, beautiful uh, untold secret of temple architecture and sculpture. Now we have to understand what is Vastu Shilpa Shastram because the Devalaya Vastu is part of Vastu Shilpa Shastram. The origin of Devalaya Vastu starts from Vastu Shilpa Shastram. We all know Vastu. Vastu means building architecture. That is how people look at it, but it is not. Vastu is Vastu Shilpa Shastram. The tradition addresses as Vastu Shilpa Shastram. So Vastu is nothing but anything that is uh, has three dimensions. So we are self, we are Vastu and the energy, the soul residing inside is Vastu. Like this, we call this Vastu, any built form anything tangible is Vastu. So Vastu is divided into two branches, Manushalaya Vastu and Devalaya Vastu. So like you see here, Manushalaya Vastu is the living space for human habitat, Manusha, human being. And Devalaya Vastu is the divine abode of Deva, the Almighty. And again, it is segregated in different parts. Like for living, Spaces for human is like Grama Nirmanam, Nagara Nirmanam, village and town planning, palaces, residence, fort, recreational areas, building commercial and public space. These are all covers under building architecture. Whereas the divine abode of uh, Deva, the Lord, it covers temples and sculptures, temple tank Pushkarani, Rathas, chariot, Temple Vaganas, Temple Moat, and what are, and all the uh, items that pertaining to temple, even the uh, um, wedding halls, uh, Kalyan Mantap, everything comes under this uh, Devalaya Vastu. So, building architecture and temple architecture and sculpture are covered under Vastu Shilpa Shastram. These are the integrated science and technology enabling are um, enabling humankind to experience harmony and bliss. And this is very important. Devalaya Vastu is very important in the construction of each and every temple and its sculpture. And uh, Vastu is not only for building uh, spaces for humans, but also for building sacred space for Deva. And now, how this is practiced, Vastu Shilpa Shastram? This is generally handed over, handed down from guru to sishya, guru to disciple, in a gurukula style, and sometimes from, uh, most of the time, from father to son. This is how this was handed down. But later, our Rishi Munis have uh, collected all these uh, um, science and uh, technological uh, um, features into manuscripts and they left around 50 treatises under three groups. So the three groups are divided into three, original works, secondary works, regional works of Shilpa Shastram. So original works contain 32 texts which are enlisted in Manashara Shilpa Shastra. So those Granthas are like Vishwakarmiyam, Vishwam, Manavidi, Manasaram, Mayamadam, and uh, Manakalpam, and so 32 texts. And the secondary works, the secondary works are based on the original works of the 32 texts. So now we have only eight texts like Vastu Vidhyay, Manushalaya Chandrika, and related other works from the original works. Then comes the regional works. We have around 10 texts, Samarangana Sutra Dhara, Silpa Prakasha, Pratima Mana Lakshanam, uh, and other books which are confined to the particular region's principles. 
like you see samarangana sutra dara is very uh, familiar in north india and when we meet uh, architects like somapura they do mention they quote slokas from samarangana sutra dara and silpa prakashike so like this we have got around 50 treatises but currently we are left with very few text and those are mayamatam manasharam brahmiyam saraswatiyam and regional works like samarangana sutra dharam shilpa prakasha and pratima mana lakshanam these are the wonderful books that guide the shilpis temple architects engineers and those who are interested to follow the shastraical principles to raise the sacred uh, built space for their lord so these treatises are not merely religious document uh, sir these are the text with much more emphasis on various aspects of vastu shilpa shastram like we saw before they cover the construction of temples and sculptures molding the sculptures and to plan and uh, uh, erect uh, pushkarnis and build rathas so we have got certain grammar prescribed grammar to carry out these uh, uh, things mentioned in devalaya vastu now these text these treatises are mostly seen in manuscript form and in samskritam kranthalipi and manipravalam and in tamil and these text they classify the temple construction into three groups it's very interesting that all that we saw in manushal i'm um, sorry in devalaya vastu covers under three groups that is karshanaadi to pradishthandam pradishthaadi to utsavandam utsavaadi to praya chittandam only these three groups covers the entire construction of temples and sculptures and those items related to devalaya vastu it's very interesting because it it simplifies like karshnaadi to pradishthandam a stapati a temple architect is involved in this process of karshnaadi to pradishthandam that is a stapati carries this part of work from the inception of selecting the site bhu nirnayam and uh, examining the site bhu pariksha and foundation laying and then to carry out the construction of the temple up to finial part that is erecting the kalasham as per vastu shilpa shastraical principles and then hand over the premises to the karta the temple uh, builder so like you say i said uh, uh, kashnadi to pradishthandam is a responsibility by a stapati the temple architect like that pradishthadi to utsavandam is the responsibility of a shivacharya or bhatacharya or any priest belonging to the temple so what is his role in pradishthadi to utsavandam a shivacharya he will be performing the kumbhavishekam the consecration ceremony that is he is taking charge of the temple from the stapati and then he will perform the kumbhavishekam the consecration ceremony and then he will carry out the regular pujas festivals called utsavam that is utsavadi as per agamic rituals and formulae this is in a way to preserve the spiritual ambience of the mandir and the divine being housed inside the sanctum then comes utsavadi to praya chittandam here the stapati temple architect and the swacharya or bhatacharya the priest both of them have to be involved to carry out praya chittandam so what is praya chittandam it is nothing but repairs renovation restoration and preservation uh, so we our linga jirnodharam topic for today comes under this utsavadi to praya chittandam so after the utsavas after a certain period the temple gets regular wear and tear and this has to be corrected this has to be repaired or renovated that is the maintenance part 
so the priest will have to consult and in accordance to the shastraical principles they will be carrying carrying out the repairing renovating and restoring the absorbed energy owing to natural and unnatural occurrences inside the temple and inside the sanctum we treat we treat the image worship as supremely sacred and divine we indians we treat image worship as supremely sacred and divine this is because all pervading energy parabrahman existing in the akasha space is brought into certain forms to enable us to enjoy the physical and spiritual welfare perpetually so there are three kinds of divine forms in the image worship cited by sage agastya maharishi in his sakalatikara shastra so he says sakala nishkala misra vibhagataha trivida meva vapuh parameshthinah i'm sorry for my sanskrit pronunciation and i am not a scholar in sanskrit my husband helped me to get this lokas so what does agastya maharishi mentions here he says there is there are three kind of forms of image worship that he calls it sakala iconic nishkala symbolic sakala nishkala mixed it's a combination of iconic and symbolic form that is sakala nishkala form let's see how these three looks like um so we are looking at the sakala thirumeni the sakala representation in tamil we call, we call this oruvam morphic form where in physical attributes are beautifully defined like we see the radha krishna and the balaji uh, uh, a replication of tirupati balaji a granite stone so these uh, uh, sculptures with uh, complete attribute physical attributes are called sakala thirumeni and now we are going to and now we are going to the next uh, slide on nishkala thirumeni that is nishkala representation the symbolic representation we call this in tamil aruvam an amorphic which has no definite form like our shivalinga and today's topic linga jirnodharam so we have to understand this so, uh, i have given a sample picture of kashi vishwanathar and spatikal ingeshwar from kawai island you were say so these are the nishkala thirumenis and the third is called misram it's a mixture mixture of sakala and nishkala representation and we call this morpho amorphic form in tamil aru uruvam so this is a combination of formless and form that is sakala and nishkala so we uh represent this sakala nishkala thirumeni with a mukalingam like you see in the picture a shivalingam with representation of faces on the shaft so uh, you have a mukalingam with the five faces of shivaji normally they do they carve one face three or five so here the let's uh, look at the five faces we call the five faces we name it uh, as satyojhadam tatpurusham vamadevam agoram and ishanam which is also all this five forms sadasvam so these are why do we have mukalingam so this is to represent the five directions and north east south west and then the uh, the top of the linga shaft you have a face most of the time they don't carve they leave it plain it's an understanding that the ishanan comes on the top of the linga nalam he represents akasha so this is mukalingam sakala nishkala thirumeni and then comes more about what is nishkala thirumeni shivalingam uh, uh, nishkala thirumeni yeah so we have to understand because we are going to uh, uh, 
know more about linga jirno dharam so to understand linga jirno dharam better we have to know in detail about shiva lingam so our ancient treatises state that before the evolution of the universe before the fabrication of universe there existed a fused state of matter in the dark void where all particles remained as an amalgamation further our maharishis they corroborate this fused state to a linga shaft shaft i'm sorry this is the absolute the pure and formless energy that existed before the big bang theory you know we travel frequently and many western scholars they do put a question what was there before big bang theory and we answer them the linga shaft was the linga shaft it existed before big bang theory it's a beautiful science uh, that dr v ganapati sthapati always uh, uh, talks in his seminars so now we understand what existed before the fabrication of universe the linga shaft with uh, all particles uh, amalgamation of all particles and it is addressed as shiva linga where the shiva means mangalam in tamil sanskritam which means auspicious so shiva is auspicious so our shastra maimata the shilpa shastra maimata cites that sarvatmeyam lingam akachameva means what permits in our heart and that the linga luminous shaft of consciousness is none other than the space itself so shiva linga tatva is correlated with space science and uh, our scriptures demonstrate that the fusion of matter the amalgamation is represented with three actions of energy that is the energy particle so it is creation protection and dissolution srishti stiti samhara so the shilpi rishis designed the linga suitably to represent the three actions in a single piece of stone in other words exhibiting the union of the three actions like you see in the picture here the form of shivalingam you can see the linga shaft which is square at the bottom and uh, octagonal in the middle and circle top so i want to go to the next slide where you can see a real linga shaft uh, and uh, you can see the square part bottom we call this brahma bhagam the creator the creation part and it has got a quality of satvika satvika guna bhava and then comes the octagonal part we call this vishnu bhagam a protector and this has a quality of rajasa rajasa guna bhava and comes the circle the rudra part the solution and he the rudra part got the tamas guna bhava so we see the three different actions are portrayed in a single piece of shaft and so this shivalinga should have a brahma sutra central axis and then like we human beings and all sculptures they do have a brahma sutra to balance and comes this one the lakshno dara we technically we call this three lines lakshno dara which looks like a shape of lotus bud stimulating a face so this is the front uh, part uh, of the linga so if you go to the next slide you can see the base for linga nalam the shaft we call this yoni peetam or avadayar and the next picture you can see the lingam and avadayar put together and you will be able to see only the circle part this is the rudra bhagam poojamsam the rest of the vishnu bhagam and uh, the square brahma bhagam are 
not visible they are inside the avadayar so the linga puranam quotes that all the forms of the universe have their origin from the shiva linga the shaft that existed before the fabrication of universe so after big bang theory after the big bang all the particles emerged out of the dark void is the luminous particles so that is what the linga puranam wants to quote that whatever we see in the universe today have their origin from the shiva lingam and it is regarded as a sacred form for worship the base is known like i said it's a yoni peetam and avadaya technically and the poojamsam rudra bhagam now i'm going to the next uh, slide we are going to see the measurements system of measurements and here uh, the measurement used for both the devalaya and manushalaya vastus are derived from paramanu the minutest energy particle from the space which is a square into dimension so again the maimata shastra cites that paramanur iti proktam yoginam drishti gocharam meaning that the space around is replete with invisible minute energy particles atoms can be seen by the yogis who dira, yogis only that is in the jnana drishti of yogis they'll be able to see visualize the pramano and later they derive the perimeter of the square as the divine measure and this is recorded in our manuscripts and this is showcased in a simple method shown in the following table here so we call this table of units for easy understanding and the rishi he says paramanu the small atom he he says to take the eight paramanu to one card dust and eight card dust to one tip of hair and eight tip of hair to one nit eight nit to one louse eight louse to ba one barley grain eight barley grains to one viral viral means angula finger measure and 24 viral 24 angula is one kishku muram so this shastraical measure is then converted to feet inches and british metric units suitable to the modern understanding and application like you see one angula means 1 3 by 8 inches and one kishku muram 2 feet 9 inches are 33 inches and you know the magnificent temples the skyscraping vimanas like tanjur pragadeshwara vimana and the uh, kalinga style of uh, gopuras and uh, all that we see skyscraping temple structures are built based on kishku muram that is 2 feet 9 inches it's very uh, amazing to see those temples built with uh, uh, using kishku muram there were no calculators no computers no measuring techniques uh, advanced uh, technology and during that kind of a period our uh, ancestors used kishku muram kishku muram is a, a um, yardstick 2 feet 9 inches and they apply that in multiples and to build such a huge temple structures now we have seen how the sacred measures are derived and how the positive qualities of this measure are used for molding statues and other sculptural uh, parts so this basic measure will resonate in harmony with it, with its devotees when applied um, as laid in uh, scriptures to bring peace and happiness to have this resonance of harmony with the statue and the temple goer and with the temple premises and the uh, um, devotees we should further go with uh, mathematical grammar like ayadi ganitam and uh, many other uh, measurement uh, methods so deriving such type of sacred measures 
for images on Shivalinga is prescribed in seven ways. Like we have seen the traditional scale, Muram, and Tala. Tala is a beautiful way of uh, following in making sculptures. The basic unit is one face length. You take one face length and you multiply or divide according to the requirement. So we make use of one to nine thala, Navathalas, uh, to fashioning images. And then comes Manangula, which you have seen earlier. And also for more for fashioning statues and sculptures, um, the Shastras recommend to take measurement of the Garbhagraha, the sanctum, Garbhagraha door opening height, Dwaramanam, and Garbhagraha wall height are Garbhagraha's base called Adhishthanam. So these are the techniques that our ancestors followed to build huge temple structures which are withstanding after so many natural calamities and which are the testimonies for our generation and for generations in the future. Now we are going to see Shivalingam. Shivalingam is classified under two types, naturally formed lingam and manusha lingam, which is also known as kriya lingam. So naturally formed lingam are based on the characteristic form of the material out of which it has been created. And we are going to see the types of material uh, of the lingam, naturally formed lingam. And manusha lingam are the manually hand chiseled lingams to perfection based on the Shilpa grammar, the measurements. So it is man-made Shivalingam. And also there is a special statement mentioned in Mayamatam and Manasaram that any linga which is not in stone is called Mani Lingam. So apart from stone made lingams, naturally formed stone lingams, the rest is addressed as money lingam. It's a beautiful term uh, in technical parlance. Let's see the natural, naturally formed Shiva lingams. These are of nine types. And of course, the first one is Swayambu linga, self-generated linga in the dense forest, caves, and in mountain top with uneven shapes, contains various facets, sides, and uh, it is the Swayambu Linga and the Shanika Linga. This is of 12 types. Shanika Linga is very interesting. It is provisional Lingas, Linga image. These are normally used during rituals, uh, temple festivals, agamically, that is, as per Agama Shastra. Lingams, these type of lingams are made out of turmeric, cooked rice, anna lingam, butter, mud, cow dung, rudraksha, flowers, butter, sandal paste, dharbha grass, rice flour, jaggery. So why do they have these provisional lingas? Because for some reason, they use these provisional lingas for temporary very, very short, sholpaneram, very short uh, time. They perform the puja, offer puja, and then they drop it in running water. They uh, dispose it. This is only for particular purpose of puja, prayachitas, like that. And then comes the bhanalingam. It is very famous bhanam. It is born, it is water born. Uh, lingam from Ganges, Narmada, and other sacred river bed. This banam, it looks like an egg in oval shape with color shading and various sizes. Bana lingam was worshipped by Lord Shiva himself, says Kamika Agamam. It says, Shivena Samskrita Yattam Bana lingam Mudhakritam. So it's very interesting that Shiva 
he worshipped this Banalingam. Then comes the Ratna gem. This is of eight type, precious gems, made of precious gems. And this is mostly for Atmatma Puja, Puja for individual purpose. Like these Ratna gems, Ratna Jalingams are made out of pearl, coral, crystal, ruby, yellow sapphire, emerald, cat's eye, blue sapphire. And these Ratna Jalingams, the Ratna, the gem that we are going to use should be with no flaws or spots. That's very important. And uh, then comes the Dharu Jalingam. Dharu gem is made out of wood, special wood, milking wood, like the sandal wood, bilva, devadharu, ashoka, karangali, the kutch wood. And again, these wood should be of good high quality with no flaw or spot and uh, sap. Now comes to devika lingam, devika worshipped by devas. This lingam is installed and worshipped by devas and Kamika Agamam cites that Deviga lingam is seen in the form of a flame, cavity, bumps and with natural flaws. Sometimes it is in the form of an dhangam drum that the Shiva is holding or a trident and sometimes it looks like Anjali Hasta that is hands holding in the Anjali Mutra. This Deviga Lingam is worshipped by Devas under various reasons and they left the Lingam after their uh, Puja, Kriyas, etc. And now we are making Pujas with the Deviga Lingam. And the Shastra says how it looks like, like I said, uh, the flame, cavity, bumps, natural flaws. So the sloka says, Deepa Khara Bhavel Lingam Nim Nonata Samanvitam Reka Kothara Samyuktam Danga Sola Samanvitam. Like I said, it sometimes it looks like a dangam and a trident. Now comes to Lohajam. Lohajam is lingas made out of metal. So there are eight types of precious metal suitable for making Lohajalingam, gold, silver, copper, brass, iron, mercury, tin and lead. I know you'll be surprised to see iron because we do not see a linga made of iron and it is not recommended to make an iron lingam for worship. In Agama Shastras and Shilpa Shastras, it is mentioned not to do Pujas or worship prayers for iron lingam, it will bring adverse effect. The rest are allowed. Now the eighth lingam is Ghanabam, worshipped by Devaganas. This lingam is seen in the shape of a white pumpkin, pomegranate, cucumber, jackfruit or palm fruit. A beautiful shape. So most of the Devaganas and Shivaganas, they install this type of lingam for some reason and worshipped. And this is stated in Kamikam. Ganehi samstapitam lingam ghanabam. And then comes Arusham, worshipped by Rishi Munis, Maharishis. Arusha lingam installed by Rishis looks like a coconut in shape with a wide base nar narrowing to the crest. Kamikam cites below that Arshalingam does not have Brahma Sutra. Remember we saw the Linga shaft with the central axis, central line, which is called the Brahma Sutra. So it says, Linga Marusha Makyatam Brahma Sutra Vivajitam. So it says there is no Brahma Sutra for Arshalingams. Now comes some pictures to see how does a banalingam looks like. So this is a banalingam with a stone made pedestal, avudayar. And this is a swayambulingam. I'm always amazed to see this swayambulingam inside a cave in Odessa. 
and uh, this is a golden lingam and i heard that this is the first solid golden lingam in uh, india shivalingam and this is mercury lingam this is to have an idea about what i said and then comes the manusha lingam which is also known as kriya lingam so like i said manusha lingams are manually chiseled from variety of from a good resonant variety of stones and in accordance to the rules of shilpa grammar okay let's see it says resonant variety of stones so how to identify the resonant variety shilpa shastram explains that there are three types of stones male stone female stone and neutral stone and silpacharyas they identify these stones based on the shape of the stone sound produced from the stone and the rekhas lines that are seen on the stone based on that they will be selecting the good variety resonant variety of stones for shivalingam the linga nalam will be made will be carved from male stone purushalingam and the avudayar will be carved from female stone strilingam and the base adarasila we call that adarasila the base will be carved using the nabumshka neutral stone so this is a beautiful process selection of stones suitable stones so for manusha lingam we have 12 kinds and these 12 kinds of lingams differ based on the detailed measurement and grammatical intricacies and mostly black granite stones are recommended for fashioning linga as it provides prosperity forever for all time so let's see the 12 types of manusha lingam first comes the samaganda lingam like you see samagandam equal parts that is the shaft having equal height of the element of brahma vishnu and rudra and this is suitable for all class of people then comes the vardhamana saivadika trayarasika swastika sarvadesika sahasra bhadra saivestya and sarvado bhadra so these lingas the shaft is determined by the heights of the elements of brahma vishnu and rudra various proportions like vardhamana it will be the square base brahma baham will be 3 and the octagonal will be 4 and the circle part rudramsam will be 7 something like this i am telling you randomly so it has got a significant why we have to design and carve in this proportions and like samagandam is suitable for all class of people vardhamana saivadika trayarasika swastika these are suitable for kingly persons prince and uh, like that for it determines the four varnas suitable for four varnas and now comes the mugalingam mugalingam like we saw earlier the shaft is carved with one three or five mukas faces of shiva and then comes dara lingam dara lingam is a beautiful lingam with 4 8 or 16 facets 16 sides and this is suitable for all classes all class of people and generally the lingam like vardhamanam saivadikam trayarasikam swastikam are suitable for to fulfill the desires victory and success for different class of people like king prince talabati the and uh, other uh, group of uh, people likewise 
the shastras prescribe in general have a uh, samaganda lingam that will provide prosperity that will shower prosperity for all time to come so now we have seen the um, lingas made by, carved by man let's see the samaganda lingam you see here the samaganda lingam it is 1000 years old and it is installed at the tirukettiswaram temple mannar sri lanka it's a beautiful shivalingam they call him mahalingam and then comes the dhara lingam you can see the different i mean the uh, shivalingam with uh, facets it is uh, 16 facets 16 sides and below you can see sahasra lingam sahasra lingam means thousand lingams are carved on the rudra bhagam pujamsam this is called sahasra lingam and normally dr ganapati stapati says why do they carve sahasra lingam one lingam is not enough no he says the sahasra lingam represents the the condition after the big bang theory so what happened after the big bang theory all the particles were uh, emerged out of the shaft in the dark void it was scattered all over the universe so even in tamil we say kodana kodi devam that is um, kodana kodi like uh, crows and crows devas were existed even in marriages they say to take blessings from kodane kodi devam mukkodi devargal they say so this is nothing but the minutest particles that radiated in the universe spread all over the universe after the big bang theory and we look at these uh, minutest luminous particles as lord god shiva and uh, uh, form of god so let's go to the next slide now we have seen the types of shivalinga and now we have to see the classification of shivalinga with the godly existence that is it is classified into three kind they call it chala linga achala linga chala chala linga lingams that can be moved are carry from place to place like those of uh, um, precious gems and metal for atmatma puja like you see in the picture uh, small lingas made uh, shiva lingas made of gems gold and mercury silver so this we keep for atmatma puja not at the temple in the public uh, prarthana puja space atmatma is for your purpose for health benefits to uh, or to receive health benefit or to get to obtain a uh, prosperity like this based on the astrological calculations we carry we keep these shivalingas at home and the dimension of this chalalinga should not exceed the height of one's thumbs so mostly it will not exceed 3 or 4 inches and then comes the achala linga in mobile nature mostly the manusha linga that is installed and consecrated within the sanctum garbhagriha with the intention not to move is called the immobile shivalinga this is addressed as durva beram shastrakali and this is used this is kept for prarthana puja for public worship like you see in the picture here and the chala chala partly mobile and partly immobile that is lingam shivalingam placed in one place but is also capable of being shifted to another place like a lingam with rudra bhagam only please note down chala chala linga are made in one single piece no separate linga shaft are avadayar it will be carved in one piece with avadayar and linga and it has got various significance which we can see later uh, linga jirno dharam an introduction like our visionaries 
of Rishi Munis, they furnished many shastraical treatises throwing principles and directions to more temples and sculptures. And they have also imparted knowledge about the measures to be taken during repair, renovation and restoration of abandoned, dilapidated, deformed and mutilated temples, sculptures and lingam. And this is owing to various reasons. And please note down, in Shilpa Shastram, we always mention Alaya Bimba Linga Jirno Dharam. That is, Alayam is Prasadam temples. Bimba is the Pratima sculptures and Linga, you know, Shivalingam. And this, this is classified, like I said, Prasada Jirno Dharam, Pratima Jirno Dharam and Linga Jirno Dharam. This section of Jirno Dhara is dealt under the chapter Jirno Dhara Vidhi or Anukarma Vidhi in Agama Vastu Shilpa text. And this is mostly for Praya Chitta, like we saw, uh, Utsavandam to Utsavadi to Praya Chittandam. And Linga Jirno Dharam falls under Praya Chitta Vidhi. And this is called a Jirno Vidhi, Jirno Dhara Vidhi or Anukarma Vidhi. Now, scholars admit that there is two Acharyas with important uh, role to play in the temple tradition. The one, Shilpacharya, he has to create the divine form and the other person, uh, Swacharya, has to adore and sustain the divine vibrancy. Hence, Agamas do contain chapters on specifics of temple vastu, devalaya vastu. So hereafter, I have to address Agama vastu shilpa shastram. Till now, till this slide, I was mentioning vastu shilpa shastram. Now, I will change to Agama shilpa, Agama vastu shilpa shastram because Jirno Dharavidi needs Agama's expertise. Now, in recent times, Jirno Dharam of temples and statues is seen widespread across the country, even outside our country. Under this situation, many of us do not know what is Jirno Dharam, why Jirno Dharam, how to carry out Jirno Dharam. So, let's see what is Jirno Dharam first. It is a Sanskrit word, Jirno plus Uddharam. Jirno means absorption of divine sanctity, digestion. The divine sanctity gets digested. Uddharam, it means we have to re-energize or recharge the absorbed divinity, sanidhyam, sanctity. Now, the divine vibrancy is infused in the Alaya Bimba Lingam gets weakened during a period of 12 years. So, the temple, Vigrahas and the divine shaft, Linga, gets weakened after the consecration ceremony, uh, after 12 years of the consecration ceremony, Kumbhabhishekam. So, how to strengthen this vibrancy? and how to correct if there is any wear and tear is, is told in Jirno Dharam. So when the when Alaya Bimba Lingam, Lingam gets uh, weakened and it has to be uh, strengthened like we go to we go for a periodical master health checkup to revitalize our to recuperate ourselves. For quick understanding, it can be said like recharging a battery, a battery power. So we understood what is a Jirno Dharam and what happens if Jirno Dharam is not performed as prescribed in scriptures. So we understand Jirno Dharam is repairs, renovating, restoring and re-energizing the temple its premises on the deity 
housed inside the temple. So what happens if this is not performed once in 12 years after the Kumbhabhishekam ceremony? So Shastras, they seriously caution that the spiritual energy, the deity Sanidhya will not be present. And our Guru Padmabhushan, Dr. Ganapati Stapati, he states that if Jirno Dharam is not carried out systematically, the impact will be alarming in the coming years. That is, there will be unknown diseases and melancholy, people will get ruined, like this. And so he says, after the consecration ceremony, after 12 years, Jirno Dharam has to be performed. So what happens if this is not performed? Let's see. Because in India, we see many dilapidated temple and uh, abandoned temple for many reasons. So maybe this is connected with Jirno Dharam, not performing Jirno Dharam. So let's see what happens if the Jirno Dharam is not performed after the 12th year of the Kumbhavshaya. Ganapati Stapati, he says, the vibrant presence of the divinity residing in the worshipful image will move from the Garbalaya to the Mahamandabam, the prayer hall. And that vibrant presence, that vibrant energy will wait for further 12 years to be restored. Then what happens if it is not performed after the second 12th year? That vibrant energy will move from the Mahamandabam to the Stalavriksham, temple tree, again waiting patiently to be restored. Then what will happen? The third, twelfth year, it will leave the Stalavriksham, temple tree, and will get disappeared in the Surya Mandala, the solar system, from where it came originally. So this is what happens. Then the temple will left empty, the temple structure, the stola form becomes in a melancholic state without its soul, the divine energy, sukshma, bimba. Thereafter, the temple gets occupied by negative forces which affect the ruler, Kartha, his village and his people. This is a main reason for our ancient temples, beautiful skyscraping, vimanas and temple structures seem dilapidated. A reason that Jirno Dharam is not performed every 12th year. Because during this Jirno Dharam, we repair the regular wear and tear and we do other uh, corrective measures to, as a maintenance part. Then what happens? Uh, 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 then why Jirno Dharam? Yeah, our Shilpi Rishis have designed a systematic approach to identify the Jirno Dharam. We understand what is Jirno Dharam and why Jirno Dharam, but how to identify the Jirno Dharam process? So, Alaya Bimba Linga Jirno Dharam is classified into four different ways. We call this Anavardhanam, Havardhanam, Punara Vardhanam and the Ridham. So Anara Vardhanam means constructing a new temple based on Vastu Shilpa Sastra and performing Anara Vardhana or Nudana Maha Kumbhavishekam, consecration ceremony. Like you see in the picture here, this is Malai Mandir in New Delhi. This temple was designed and constructed by my Guru Dr. V. Ganapati Stapati. And it is a new temple there. So I've taken this picture as a best fitting example. And then comes Avardhanam. Avardhanam is renovating and restoring an abandoned and dilapidated temple on its sculptures and performing Avardhana Kumbhavishayam. Like you see in the picture here, a completely dilapidated temple. This is a Shiva temple in a village near Polo district. Tamil Nadu, a beautiful statue of Shiva Parvati and very much damaged and uh, uh, Shiva Linga. And this temple is like this, you see in the picture here. So it is an abandoned temple. So this is called Avardhanam. Then comes Punaravardhanam. Punaravardhanam is the temple 
which is under daily pujas and rituals but it is seen with unforeseen and accidental occurrences apart from the regular wear and tear so this has to be corrected and perform punaravardana kumbhabhishekam which is also called ashtabandana jirnodhara kumbhabhishekam why do they call the ashtabandana jirnodhara kumbhabhishekam when a regular uh, temple i mean when a temple under regular pujas and after the 12th year they are performing the kumbhabhishekam all the statues in the sanctum the parivara alaya need to be removed and installed again with new ashtabandana adhesive paste ashtabandana is the herbal adhesive paste that is used to fix the petum on the pedestal on the statue so that will have to be corrected so we call this uh jirno dhara ashtabandana kumbhabhishekam yeah so like you see the temple here sri madhava perumal temple a famous temple dated back to 700 years in chennai a beautiful temple of shiva and it was renovated by my husband this is called punaravardana style then comes andaridam the suvacharya is responsible so rectifying and rejuvenating or reenergizing the disturbed spiritual ambience sanidhyam under various unforeseen natural and unnatural happenings this is rectified through prayat chittam as per agamic rituals and formula to sustain the sanidhya the presence of divine power like you see we know uh, raghavendra mantralayam Uh, in the past the temple was in flood it was affected by flood so in that case the sanctity gets disturbed so after draining the water everything the temple pujaris they perform the homa yagya to correct the disturbed spiritual ambience to bring back the sanitiyam like that in sri lanka we see some unwanted death took place inside the temple a famous temple so what happens the temple is under a dosha of a death so again there they will perform pujas agamikali and chanting mantras with 1000 2000 avartis to remove the negative ambiance like that in our temples our ancient temples in india mostly seen in villages beautiful temples when these temples are left unattended we can see pet animals cat dogs entering inside the temple and this will cause disturbance to the prevailing ambience in the sanctum and the premises so this has to be rectified too like you see in the picture here a shivalinga prasadam food has been offered but dogs are eating the food this is a major dosha and this will create a big dosha so this has to be rectified again with prayachita vidhi making homas yagya different kind of yagyas to remove the negative force and bring back the positive vibrance so rectification of this uh, uh, disturbed ambience is mostly related with agama shastras so agama pandits swacharyas bhatacharyas will carry out these process where the temple structure are the presiding deity and auxiliary deities are not affected uh, but the ambience the spiritual ambience is disturbed so let's go to next slide now performing jirnodharam 
Uttara Kamikam, one of the Agamas, it says, Jirnathyam Pujitam Handi Nihandi Tat Apujitam. Meaning, if one does not perform or performs pujas or rituals in a dilapidated temple with its deity inside, will be a serious offense and it may end with unpleasant results like natural calamitous epidemics etc. What I want to say is there is an abandoned temple in a dilapidated condition but the statues housed inside the sanctum Garbalaya looks very beautiful with very uh, 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 vibrant uh, form and if you go there to perform your uh, pujas, archanas will affect you since you are staying in that uh, particular village and if you do pujas will affect you and if you do not carry the pujas will also affect you that's what the Agama says Jirnathyam Pujidam Handi Nihandi Tat Apujidam will be a serious offense so Agama professor Dr. S.P. Sabharatna Svacharya a leading uh, scholar in Agama Shastra, he says that it is an offense and the defects would destroy the salubriousness and environmental balance of the country. See how serious uh, 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 it is. So India has countless and precious temples, sculptures and lingas belonging to a certain groups of people, family and community for Paratha Puja, public pujas. And it is very serious thing and we have to consider the divinity should not disturb and we have to reclaim. So most of these temples and images are left unattended due to lack of funds and manpower. So the temple is left again in a gloomy state, melancholic state, which impacts the entire family, community and any trust committees with unwanted doshas. So now let's see how to perform Linga Jirnodharam. We have Alaya Bimba Linga Jirnodharam. Uh, I am dealing only with Linga Jirnodharam in this talk. So the types of Linga, uh, the types of Linga Jirnodharam is under two major cl classification. Like we saw before, types of Lingams are two, two uh, category. So Naturally made lingas and man made lingas. Our Rishi Muni is prescribed to take up Jivnodhara for both the types of linga as follows. So, first, let us see. So, let us see Swayambu linga, the naturally formed Swayambu linga. Shastras do not recommend Jivnodharam for Swayambu lingam. It says, Swayambhuvadi lingesu jirnodharam na karayetu na karayetu So do not perform jirnodharam for swayambhu lingam. Instead, if there is any severe cracks, deformation and mutilation on the naturally formed swayambhu lingam, if any of these things are diagnosed, then the image has to be covered with ornamental metal sheet covering like uh, golden kavacha, brass kavacha or copper kavacha like you see in the picture here as a protective measure for the um, Swayambhalingam like in the Kalahasti temple. The Shivalingam is a very beautiful one and owing to the damages it is very thin as a protective measure so like this in many of our ancient temples the mula bearum linga is affected and with the damages which cannot be uh, uh, 
corrected hence covering the kavachas is the only measure available but the petam for the swayambalingam if it is seen damaged it can be replaced or maintaining the same if it is under the condition of repairing so but while carrying out the repair renovation for avudaya the base one has to make sure to maintain the same design measurement and equal type of material are with the higher quality than the existing one why i say higher quality than the existing one because we may have the base avadayar made out of bricks now it is damaged we have to replace the avadayar we have to replace it with bricks but we can replace it by a stone made avadayar which is higher in quality and longevity will be there so like this the shastras recommend higher quality now now let's see bhan linga now most of the time this type of linga gets installed upside down on the pedum it's very surprising upside down how can it be bhan linga normally looks like an egg oval shape and this um uh banalingam the wider part has to be uh at the top and the narrowing part should be on the bottom of the base so this is done vice versa which is an adverse uh, uh thing we should not do so most of the time this linga installed upside down and this is a serious adverse effect a dosha and the narrow part will go on the bottom and the wider part will have to be on the top as pujasam the rudra bhagam there is no stimulation of facial lines the three lines that go to represent as a face is not seen in this bhana lingam but in some cases naturally formed lines rekhas are there and we have to carefully study those rekhas and then install the bana lingam and there is in some cases erosion on this linga naturally and this should not exceed 4 1 by 8 inch that is triangular should not uh, exceed in that case it has to the if it is more than triangular the erosion or the damage is more than the triangular that bana linga should be dropped in the sea very ceremoniously ceremoniously in the sense the energy inside the bana linga has to be transferred to a provisional form or a, a provisional kalasha and then the linga has to be dropped in the sea with all band uh, uh music everything you know nadaswaram and uh, uh, chanting mantras and drop it in the sea or in a uh, uh, sacred rivers or in a place where two rivers are meeting it's very auspicious so the sloka says bana linga uh, the sloka says bana lingasya jivne to triangula दतिकम यथा उत्तर उत्थार क्रम मार्गेन समुद्रे निक्षिपे बुतः सो देन कम्स दि रत्नजलिंग लाइक ए सैड दिस इज फॉर आत्मात्म पूजा लिंग इज मेड आउट ऑफ दिस प्रिशियस एंड सेमी प्रिशियस जेम्स नीड टू बी फ्लॉलेस एंड विथ नो स्पॉट आर क्रैक्स इफ इट इज सो it will bring an adverse effect as it is for atmatma puja it may go up to ruining the particular family 
ruining the business and many negative uh, things may take place so one has to be very careful while having ratnajalinga for atmatma pooja then comes the then comes the loha jalinga linga is casted out of metal uh, different types of metal that we saw previous slides in previous slides if these metal linga seen damaged or cracked then what has to be done we immediately rectify this linga if it is in a permissible level a very hairline crack or you know very minor uh, damages if it exceeds triangular like i said for the uh, um, other uh, lingam if it exceeds that particular uh, uh, thickness then it is a severe and unrepairable condition then this loha jalingam has to be put in the fire and the melted metal is considered as the purified metal and this can be used again to recast the linga or any accessories like prabhavali trident uh, for the shivalingam the for the particular shivalingam so one has to be very careful that lingas for atmatma pooja like the metal lingams need to be made in solid metal if it is gold silver brass you know it has to be made out of solid metal hollow casting pieces shivalinga is not recommended as the sanidhya will be absent in those kind of hollow pieces now let's see the arushalingam like we know all of us we know arushalingam is worshiped by rishi munis so any kind of damage seen on arsha will be bestowing the positive vibration and will not affect the linga worshipper the archagas the karta of the temple and even the devotees it's very surprising you may ask me how come this uh, damages in arshalingam will not affect us even it's surprising for me the shastra says maharishis install the arshalingam on it looks in uneven shape and there are crevices cavity cracks never mind this is created by maharishis the reason the answer this is created by maharishis and it has it permits the energy energy flow and it has got a uh, 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 full power even though it is damaged and it is suitable but in some cases like in tiruvanmiyur uh, there is a in, in chennai tiruvanmiyur there is a famous temple called marundeeshwarar temple and the moola beeram the presiding deity marundeeshwarar in linga form he is so thin and fragile and with uh, many uh, uh, cracks cavity but it is installed by valmiki maharishi so that shivalinga still holds the uh, divine vibration and will hold for years to come for generations to come so as a protective measure because of its fragile condition as a protective measure shastras recommend to have a suitable metal covering a kavacha like we saw at kalahasti can be provided and this is only a protective measure and nothing will disturb the uh, uh, shivalinga the fragile shivalinga now let's see jirnodharam for manushalingam so before taking up the repairs and restoration of manushalingas the stapati's temple architect has to study or examine the following features that is type of lingam and avadayar subject to be restored and uh, type of material used application of measurement and aesthetics location of the lingam inside the sanctum type of damage cracks fractures deformation 
and mutilation etc thickness of the damaged parts should not exceed 3 inches he has to make sure about this non defining lakshno dharam the three lines and brahma sutra central axis orientation of the linga so let's see some types of shivalingam damaged shivalingams are carved by a man a shilpi so like you see the base avadayar it is a banalingam but the avadayar is carved in stone granite stone it is with severe cracks you can see here the large crack here and there are two the other sides so this is a serious offense we cannot keep this avadayar in the sanctum for pujas the banalingam is in good condition but the avadayar is severely affected and you can see here a uh, deliberately damaged avadayar why i am saying deliberately because when this avadayar was carved at the workshop of a shilpi and when they carrying some other works it gets damaged deliberately and then you can see another uh, linga here six faceted dhara lingam this is damaged on the top portion the same time you can see the lingam without damage so this is at kailashanatha temple kanchipuram and this is at shore temple mahablipuram so these are some of the examples that i uh, presented here for you to have an idea about the damages so now the stapati the temple architect has to follow some important rules to be adhered to during jino dhara so agama vastu shilpa shastra lays some other conditions to be followed during the process of jino dharam use of materials dravyam during replication of worn out images like the one we saw the avadayar cracks if material similar to those used initially is not available the mahimata shastra recommends a better and superior quality material to be used then comes the second rule for that the kamikam agama cites that manahine mahavyadihi adihe kartru nasanam tasmat sarva prayatnena karaye lakshanan vitam meaning when you replicate the worn out image the existing measures and proportions should not fall short or reduced if so then the damage that is the then there'll be unwanted uh, um unpleasant happenings will take place it may occur severe diseases if the measures are increased then the karta will be ruined and sometimes uh, uh, um the entire village will get uh, uh, disturbed and uh, so the measurement should not exceed the measurement should not decrease it will bring disease and if it exceeds the kartru will be nasanam will get uh, ruined like this the shastra is quoting so one has to be very careful and the shastra recommends to be careful uh, while replicating the statue and to follow the prescribed format on the existing statue during the renovating and restoring shivalingas now installation of shivalinga installation of shivalinga is a major aspect to deal with while renovation and restoration manasaram cites that garbhagriha madhye bhagena shankaram see we go to temple and we stand in front of garbhalaya and uh, we see shivaling the nishkala trimeni at the center installed at the center of the sanctum whereas the sakala trimeni like balaji kartikeya tatatreya and all those gods 
they are installed back from the center point like ganesha on the fourth part saraswati likewise except shivalingam no other gods will be installed in the center this is this has to be carefully followed because shivalinga the nishkala form has to be installed at the center called brahma padam the meeting point of purva and soma sutras the east west and north south axis like you see in the drawing the east west and north south lines they meet at the center and that is the brahma padam so the shivalinga has to be installed at the brahma padam so this is the process carried out for shivalinga in shivalinga pradishtai according to shastraical norms and the stapati or the temple architect who is doing the carrying out the renovation has to make sure that this is followed the installation of shivalinga is rightly followed in case of severe uh, yeah so this has to be carried out as laid in shastraical norms so in case of severe damage and uh, which cannot be repaired need to be disposed after the kalakarshanam procedure based on agamic rules so what is kalakarshanam it's a new term for all of you i know kalakarshanam is while replicating the statue linga bimba we have to remove the energy residing inside the bimba transfer to a temporary provisional uh, um, form or kalasha so the divine energy will reside in that temporary uh, place till it gets its original form so normally we provide a figwood plate where we draw the lord's form or we carve the shivalinga and or if the figwood plate is not available a kalasha will be used to transfer the divine energy and it will be residing in that kalasha and after the kalakarshanam that is transferring the divine energy to the kalasha or the figwood the image without the divine energy will have to be disposed as per the visarjanam rules like i said before the visarjanam rules is disposing according to the shastraical norms that is if the shivalingam is a stone made shivalingam it has to be dropped in the running water well pond and uh, if it is a wooden made linga it has to be buried on the north or south side of the temple or drop it in the yaga gundam if it is a metal casted shivalinga then it will have to be melted into the fire and the purified molten metal for fabricating a new icon or ornamental accessories can be made use and if it is in sometimes there will be minor damages in the mugalingam so what how to treat this so it could be set right by covering the copper silver or gold made kavachas this is cited in sirpa ratnam shastra as paada chede kara chede angulyadi vigaleshati sanidhyam lakshyade yati tadaiva patva samsotya prayat chittam samacharet that is minor damages like let me tell you renovating an image a pratima and a linga there is many difference a pratima is a complete round form where it has limbs so but for a shivalinga it's a formless shape so if it is a pratima if a finger is damaged hand arm or ears abarnas it can be covered with a uh, uh, covering sheet 
that is what it says samsotya praya chittam samachret likewise for mohalingam if the nose or if the ears get damaged it has to be covered with kavacham so in case of family run temples see in india we have countless temples and many of us belong to a certain family run temple in the village or in the community so in case of these family run shiva temples since we are talking about linga jirnodharam let's look at the shiva linga temples shiva temples in case of family run shiva temples that are neglected by the present generation unknowingly what will be the effects and what will be the corrective steps to be taken to remove the dosha the defects so the shastras says it is a serious issue that we come across with many of our temple builders who are suffering with different types of doshas we see that in shastras and we encounter we come across with many of our temple builders this is mostly unknowingly and lack of knowledge in the science and technology of temple devalaya vastu which leads to such doshas this can be avoided by approaching an expert tapati instead of going to masons and building contractors i'm sorry to say this to masons and building contractors with poor know how about vastu shastra vastu shilpa shastra so this is like approaching a general physician for major heart surgery or liver transplant instead of going to a cardiologist or liver transplant surgeon so you'll be able to understand what i want to say so repairing renovating and restoring a temple structure is similar to a major surgery so some of the doshas and corrective measures for present generation which we would like to share is if there is any damaged linga retained in the garbhalaya along with the newly installed image with sentiments that is the newly carved image will be installed and with sentiment feelings the damaged linga will also be seen inside the garbhagraha this is not recommended this would lead to doshas like ruining the family members disturbed ambience in the house mentally disturbed uh, situation now procuring readily available lingas to replace the damaged ones here when you go for a ready made custom made purchase of shiva lingas please make sure the mana pramanam is correctly handled because if the mana pramanam is not up to the uh, uh, said rules in the shilpa shastra it will invite problem and the members may get visual problem that is they may get visually disabled or diseases will be diagnosed so to seek advice of an expert tapati or temple architect to, to replicate the existing statue with mana pramanam and perform the nayanon milanam i opening along with before pradishthapana nayanon milanam is i nayanon milanam or netron milanam it is an interesting part in the temple tradition and culture both for pratimas and for linga shivalinga the eyes are have to be opened for pratimas sculptures navadwara have to be opened and for shivalinga the poojamsam the lakshno dhara has to be performed as nayanon melanam it is a ceremonious aspect during kumbhabhishekam event consecration event now the next item is before renovation restoration a balalayam provisional shrine is to be constructed in many cases in the villages and towns they do not understand what is a provisional shrine balalayam is because transferring divine energy through kalakarshanam 
into a fake gold plate or kalasha need to be placed inside the provisional shrine you cannot carry it to some other places it has to be near the temple where uh, uh, the balalayam is built and daily rituals have to be performed for the transferred divine energy in the kalasha after the completion of the renovated or newly carved image the divine energy kept so stored in the kalasha will be reinstated to its original or newly carved linga according to agama rituals now making use of shivalinga found in rivers well water pond etc brings negative effects yes because like i said in the previous slides when a linga gets damaged it cannot be repaired we drop it in the sea or in the running water so and when we happen to find a linga from the water river or well you have to understand like we dropped in the sea some others would have dropped it because of some kind of damage so we cannot use it it will give nef nef negative i'm sorry negative effect so even if you make use of this damaged uh, uh, linga found in the river or water pond or unearthed uh, uh, things will ruin the family or will bring adverse effects to the village so avoid you avoid using these types of unearthed images and if at all you have found something like the please dispose it immediately as per the rules of visarjanam or hand it over to the archaeological department the common problem there is a common problem temples are oriented in vidik that is inter cardinal direction this is a common problem that we encounter during our temple projects so when the temples are oriented in vidik that is inter, inter cardinal direction and during prana pradishtai of the presiding deity that deity will be oriented to the right direction so please listen the temple will be facing inter cardinal direction that is let's say a temple is facing east direction and it is tilted around 5 to 7 degrees towards southeast and when you install the statue it has to face true east and they will do the prana pradishtai oriented to the right direction and you think this will give us prosperity and uh, harmony no it's very doubtful this is not correct procedure also as the temple the stula bimbam and the deity sukshma bimbam need to be aligned in the same sutra in the same line otherwise this temple will be considered as a deformed form a deformed child uh, a deformed form of the god which will not give prosperity or harmony this is a serious issue we have encountered in many of our temple projects then comes one of the major another issue is the difficulty in tracing the linga's facial lines the lakshno dharam and the center line brahma sutra once my husband visited a temple for consulting and the temple was not in a good shape no devot devotees are thronging the temple so he examined everything things were somewhat okay and he examined the shivalinga it's a shiva temple so he felt things are perfect why devotees are not thronging the temple why rituals are not so uh, 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 inviting the uh, devotees so something is wrong but temple is constructed according to shilpaik norms then stapati had a doubt my husband selvanathan stapati had a doubt he asked to remove the abharanas alankara done on shivalinga then he asked the priest to show the lakshno dhara the three lines the priest said no there is nothing there like that it is a manusha linga so the priest said i cannot see any lines in front then he said to bring a torch and a mirror 
he asked him to hold the mirror behind the linga and to light the torch and he asked the priest if he is able to see the three lines the priest said yes i am able to see the lakshmi dara the three lines then my husband understood then we informed the temple management to bring the shivalinga to its original stature that is to face to bring the face to the front because shiva is turning back side how he will be happy so nothing will take place positively there so these type of mistakes are also happening uh, in these days so detect, uh, the, the defect will be uh, invited uh, the defect will invite unnecessary problems so these has to be carefully verified and the linga installed accordingly uh, as laid in the shastra today in most of the temple presiding and parivara deities are displayed in the same platform like in an art gallery see in art gallery they line up all the images and other uh, features but in a temple we cannot do that our temple is not a congregational hall it is a temple a form of god a living organism a living entity so why these temples are aligning the uh, presiding deity and parivara deities together on a platform it's mainly because to facilitate facilitate the priest to perform pujas and rituals standing from one point <laughs> this is not the correct way of doing and it will react negatively to the karta priest and to the devi devotees also as the energy field gets clashes due to the sthana bedam that is displacement that is the spatial arrangement is not according to the shastraical norms and most of us know that the purpose of water spout in a shivalingam is to allow the abhisheka water to drain just give me a sec please so most of us know that the purpose of water spout is to allow the abhisheka water to drain and in some cases when the shivalinga is installed in the sanctum the water spout doesn't face the right direction normally the water spout we call it gomukhi has to face the north direction so there is a confusion in the position of this water spout and this will bring a defect too so the right person the temple architect has to be approached to place the install the shivalingam in all respects and replication of damaged shivalingas need to be carefully carried out with respect to quality of material existing measurement and aesthetics now i am coming to my concluding marks remarks well we believe and still worshiping the age old shivalingas installed in temples of kashi rameshwaram panjabhuta kshetras and all other ancient temples shiva temples don't we believe that these temples shower on us prosperity and peace over the centuries it is very disheartening to see that innumerable temples and shivalingas are in dilapidated and left abandoned owing to various reasons so to conclude my talk i would like to bring to your kind notice to a remarkable statement by kanchi mahapriyava jagadguru sri chandra shekhar swami mahapriyava always appealed to the public to come forward to renovate to restore and to reclaim the countless and magnificent age old temples and sculptures spread throughout india so thank you all for your kind attention and if there is any questions please ask me thank you maybe the first question that you said the unearth shivalinga uh, yeah either from rivers or underground or from wells yes uh, could not be used but in an earlier slide you had mentioned that uh, the divine energy is established in uh, 
you know, it, uh, in the Garbhagraha, it's established in the Garbhagraha for 12 years, then it moves to the, uh, to the uh, sides of the temple, then to a fig tree, or I'm guessing a, a Barkad. Temple, temple stala, the yeah. temple tree. And then it leaves. So yeah. if there is an unearthed Shivalinga, then mm. the energy would have left. So it is just like a stone. Yeah. So why would there be any negative effects or whatever? It is just a stone, just like in an, uh, if you, if you, even if you worshipped it. Okay. Well, uh, Rahul ji, uh, even the energy is gone. It is a stone without life. And this can be used as a, a display purpose or to narrate our uh, culture in, uh, by the archaeological uh, department. Okay, not at home or not at the temple or home shrine because even though it has no life, it will have an adverse effect. I'm sorry to say like keeping a dead body at home, something like that. So we should not have the unearthed pieces, unearthed uh, statues kept at home or at temple. Instead, we can hand over to the archaeological people or if it is to your family temple, you can have it disposed most into the uh, holy water. And uh, um, many people ask me about the antique pieces and we recommend them to have antique pieces with hollow nature, not solid antique pieces. Yeah. Is your question answered? Yes. Thank you. I will have a follow-up question. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the uh, mercury lingas, yeah. know, is that alchemy or is there a proper way of solidifying mercury? Can you elaborate over there? Is that in the Shastras and anybody can do it? No, what I understand is Ratnaja lingams are very... Uh, um, It is a very rare of its kind because not all the people will make use of precious gems and uh, it gives prosperity, health and uh, uh, it will give all types of boon, whatever you ask. But it has to be uh, kept in the uh, home shrine with all due uh, uh, respect, agamically. But so far as Mercury is concerned, I haven't seen any Mercury Linga so far. And the one I uh, posted in the um, uh, slide is from uh, um, Google. And uh, it is quite difficult to perform, to make a Mercury Linga, uh, Rahulji, because Siddha, you know, Siddha Purushas, they are very good and uh, very efficient in making uh, um, Dadu minerals and uh, Mercury. And Mercury is the base for the Siddha Purushas. So I don't think uh, it's easy thing to uh, make a Mercury Shvalinga. Okay. There, are, there are some, at least one or two, if I'm not wrong, at the Coimbatore Isha Ashram. Uh, yes. In Pune at, uh, 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 you know, in the Mahavatar Babaji, uh, his lineage, there is one Shivalinga there and there is one around Delhi. Somebody. Yeah, so it's very rare, you see, and it is especially by Isha, Swamiji, they are all great uh, spiritual leaders who can able to manage and perform the pujas and also the Mercury Linga. So, so it's only for Siddhas, it's not for... No, no, it is made by Siddhas and the rituals have to be very strictly adhered to, yeah. And I don't think family people can do that, I doubt on that, it's my personal opinion. Nice talk and uh, thank you. Uh, I was uh, able to correlate my yes. village temple. Actually, yes. I am from northern India, but the pattern you showed, I, yeah. I find the same temple in my village is matching. Yes. yes. So I have two questions actually. Yes. The Sivalinga in my village, my ancestor used to say that uh, it was uh, damaged by someone yeah. long back. He also don't know. So okay. the people are offering the worship over there. And mm -hmm. we can so see only the base of that Sivalinga, not okay. the upper part. Upper part was very little. So okay. can you comment something on that? It's good or bad or how we can repair this one? Do and you my... have the picture of the upper part? No, no. I don't have, but uh, 
it seems like that you told the inverted sivalinga it's like that so yeah we can see the cutted part from the top okay and it was very regular in the shape oh okay yeah, no i why i'm asking the picture i just wanted to know if it is swayambhu or bhanalinga so uh, i want to see the shape and if it is possible if you can share the picture uh, later maybe uh, yeah, me and my husband we can give you a uh, an answer for this so the such temples are you know especially in north india they are all over the place right yes yes thousands of them all over the place where i live uh there is now something called uh, you know sultan gadi mosque and unfortunately at the garbagraha it was supposed to be by reclaim temples i realized that it was a very big shiva temple okay from where i live and at the garbagraha of course the temple is broken it is now a sort of a mosque okay uh, not a practicing mosque but just a ami mm-hmm. area and where was the garbagraha there is a uh a grave which yeah. is a common practice uh, in mm. samik in villages to replace shivalingas or replace the primary deity with a grave okay mm-hmm. so these are all over the place and also yeah. you know, it is very sad thing that is happening in our country yeah, yeah. and so my question is that you know uh, when you when you excavate so i've been to several archaeological sites uh, mm. around the country and you know there are shivalinga so for example in bateshwar temples there were 200 temples which an archaeologist kk mohammed is given a talk yeah. on okay. the excavations also he has he uh, vitalized about 80 temples in that area mm-hmm. and then all shiva okay. mm-hmm. um some by the layman like me they are the shivalinga is uh, you know is in good shape is not broken but now today i realize the the yoni for example is all broken so yeah. these temples you are saying can potentially all be revived okay i'm asking question you know normally the thought process is that if a murti say in khajuraho yeah. um, out of the 10 12 temple complex only one shiva temple is in practice is in okay. uh, is living mm-hmm. all the other temples nobody worships there simply because some part of the deity of the murti is uh, is khandit which means yeah. either the hand is broken or something mm. but i've never seen them cover it with like you said a, sh- a, a metal sheet and yeah. practice again the only villagers go and offer some flowers and that's how yeah, yeah. Mm. so it's all possible to revive all all these temples you're saying and however they are in the yeah it is possible uh, rahul ji because uh, why gajra temples uh, see it is kept as an art gallery we go there as a tourist only we are not going as pilgrims okay so there is no regular rituals and pujas sometimes with shoes on or ah, shoes on so we have to consider uh, though it is an archaeological uh, site uh, like take for example tanjore big temple the pragadeshwara temple hello can you hear me uh, yes yeah so the tanjore big temple it is an archaeological uh, uh, um, it is under archaeological department yet po- regular pujas are being carried out and we do have uh, um, uh, uh, devotees thronging the premises and pujas are there the divinity the divine ambience can be felt so maybe we have to transform our uh ancient temples in this manner in this way yeah as you mentioned this shivalinga is made up of different uh, different uh, uh metals yeah and then uh, we can see that this different shivalinga has different colors also yes so do you think is there any relation of the color with the shivalinga or is a metal relation with the shivalinga as per the energy is concerned okay if you are asking about metal made loha jalingam okay metal so each metal like silver is a different color gold is a different color but the shastra says three ways uddamam madhyamam adamam uddamam means very good if using gold made shivalingam and madhyamam is for silver made shivalingam and uh, um 
Uddamam, Madhimam, Adamam for others. Fairly, okay, fairly good, not bad, and very good in this way. But if one if one takes a gold made shivalingam and he makes prayers at home daily pujas it will bestow fortune like anything you'll say no god enough but he'll keep on giving you fortune it's like that so the quality of metals are different and based on that you will receive good uh, fortunes prosperity harmony and bliss ma'am what i want to ask you is that that uh, in kolkata we do have here many shiva temples here many many old shiva temples here okay. many of them are in dilapidated conditions okay. it's very painful to see ma'am ma that that it's not being restored but ma'am yeah. my question is a, a bit different that ma'am we have our own darshana sthan in our home in our okay. home home is, shrine home shrine yes what okay. do we bengali we call thakur ghar okay. okay so ma'am my question is that what happens is that that uh, you know that uh, our, our family members yes the old ones means our grandmother grandfathers okay their generation is gone actually right okay. now okay okay in my family they are gone okay they are, they are long gone so yes. you know these people had all that knowledge that how, what to do and how to do how to keep everything in order okay now the present generation they you know what i can say they are not into this mm -hmm. so my question is in our that home shrine that there are many dt uh, idols who are kept there okay so many of them are dams so uh, what i want to ask is that so can we apply the same to in our home shrine okay uh, i think i've understood your question uh sanjay ji uh, see there is two types of pujas atmatma puja and parartha puja atmatma puja is for home shrine by individuals and parartha puja is public uh, uh, purpose pujas at public space, uh, space so for atmatma puja you can have deities but not like placed in temples you should have any one of the deity or two deities uh, your ishta devata or kula devata and the dimension should not exceed the dimension of your soul and it is calculated thump this thump is the uh, uh, measurement so roughly it will be 4 to 5 inches and you can have your daily pujas rituals and you can consult your pujari but having all the deities like in the temple making pujas at home is not recommended by shastras now my yeah. first question is my first question is uh, that uh, what the temple we construct it is a physical construction and uh, the deity is going to be placed it is a kind of divine uh, procedure so the physical and divine procedure these two things are need to be uh, uh, correlated and now we can manifest god through the time and uh, the, the time we can manifest through the planetary positions so is there any provision for uh, astronomical or jyotish uh, recommendation uh, related to when to install deity in which uh, planetary positions in which uh, nakshatra in which star is there any kind of thing available into literature Yes, yes, we do have. See, Vastu Shilpa Shastram is a vast ocean. I have mm -hmm. approached only for Linga Jirno Dharam, but in Vastu Shilpa Shastram, we have a chapter called Ayadi Ganitam, and astrological calculations are uh, uh, um, followed too in our designing temples, images. and installation and performing nayanon milanam opening eyes and erecting the stupi kalasa on the shikhar mm. so mm. astrological calculations are very important sir like in jyotish shastra they take uh, um, nakshatras janma nakshatras of a male and female to match for mm -hmm. marriage purposes okay alliance mm. like that mm -hmm. in uh, um, vastu shilpa shastram mm. if you mm. want to have a man made shivalinga for your temple so we mm. will have to match janma nakshatras for example mm. your nakshatra is ashwini and the nakshatra mm. of shivalinga is tirvadare we will have mm. to match these two janma uh, birth stars 
and mm-hmm. derive a number which is already mm-hmm. there in a ready reckoner by our maharishis and mm-hmm. also we will have to check with the grama nakshatra so these three mm-hmm. three nakshatras will be checked and and a number suitable for this three nakshatra nakshatras will be derived and that number mm. will be in uh, a traditional uh, uh, um, uh, traditional way and we have to convert mm. it into metric unit and then we'll design mm. the temple or the will uh, fashion the statue so mm-hmm. like that we also make sure tara palan mm. you know what is a tara palan counting mm. the stars and it will uh, give you the aspect nine aspect mm. it is also very important and for mm. uh, whatever uh, uh, um, ceremony we do in this uh, uh, process building temple mm. process or making statues we will do everything very auspiciously performing pujas mm. and on a particular day particular mm. star particular hora mm. and you must mm. have heard about vastu day vastu day mm. is an important aspect of vastu shilpa shastram so in a year mm. about 6 or 7 vastu days will be there and that mm. day will be selected to perform bhumi puja or vastu puja is equally mm. important so it's a vast mm. ocean where we have to know more okay mm. so we have we do uh, uh, correlate certain things mm. with jyotish numerological shastras yeah. so e- 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 let me further elaborate on why uh, this question came into my my, my mind okay uh, i am from, i am from gujarat and uh, there is a famous temple rudra mahalay in sidhpur patan okay now rudra mahal rudra mahalay was uh, built by chalukya king uh, uh, bhimdev solanki okay. and uh, at the time at the time of construction uh, mm. his architecture was uh, devdhar Okay. And uh, Devdhar prescribed a particular time that within mm. this time only the uh, <laughs> that uh, uh, that first uh, impression of the first pavement of the temple has to be done. Okay. And uh, due to some mistake, uh, Bhimdev Solanki missed that time period. Okay. And uh, Devdhar told, and uh, after that time he just uh, uh, inserted the. the tree come into the land okay. and devdar told that devdar told that you have missed uh, that time phase and uh, when uh, the time i told you at that time the kal sarp was moving below the land so that's ragu kala ha 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 so if you if you if you had uh, penetrated your uh, this tree come into the kal sarp head your mm. temple would have been long lived Mm. but you have missed that opportunity you cannot mm. now your temple will not be long lived it will be mm. destroyed mm. so within 50 or 100 year the temple was temple was destroyed now rudra mahal only remains are left Nothing it's true left. sir it is true time is very important kalam that is it's very important mm. as per vastu shilpa shastra uh, now my second question is uh, you mentioned that uh, metal ceiling has to be constructed out of this eight metal only that yeah. gold silver copper gold silver silver copper brass iron yeah. mercury mm-hmm. tin tin yeah. and lead that is yeah. technically known as plumbum yes uh, now is there any mention about zinc uh, well we have got another one metal sir panchaloham we call and there is a mixture mm. it's an alloy of five metals where mm. we do include zinc hmm Yeah. Okay. Now, why I am asking this question is there is a fundamental reason that uh, this zinc, gold, silver, copper, and uh, iron these were plenty of available in Vedic li- even they it is mentioned into Vedic literature also. Yes. But the tin, tin and lead are not mentioned. Hmm. So yeah, if uh, uh, this means the literature you cited yes. may be of the recent origin. it's not like that sir we have got uh-huh. many treatises and like i said samarangana sutra dara is belonging to north indian uh, uh, architecture uh-huh. and we have mayamadam manasaram so uh-huh. there will be slight differences in materials and you know desacharam in uh-huh. southern region we get black stones whereas in northern region you have white marble 
are sandstones mm-hmm. so this is they mm-hmm. search around based on the available resources they will perform the uh, uh, image uh, or other uh, uh, um, articles you know making articles mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. now yeah. third question is uh, you mentioned about this mercury sieving um mm-hmm. mercury at normal atmospheric condition is not available uh, uh, not visible into solid form yes uh, it will it will it, it is uh, phys- it is visible in liquid form only so, yes uh, is there any procedure mentioned into literature how to maintain the solidity of the mercury in normal atmospheric condition no i heard that only the link has to be constructed okay i uh, so far i did not see in our shastras but i heard yeah. i haven't seen but the uh, siddha purusha the annals of siddha purushas are elaborately explaining about making things out of mercury yeah maybe mm-hmm. you can uh, refer with uh, uh, siddha purusha text you know mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. no actually i i currently i am reading atharva veda in atharva veda also the mercury is mentioned but yeah. the usage where it is used it is used as aushati yeah uh, Uh, not as the temple, uh, not as the idol or uh, something uh, deity worshiping. But there Now, is a course? shastra. I'm sorry. Mm. There is a shastra. If you are very much interested, you can refer um, Yandra Sarvasva by Bharadwaj Muni, wherein wherein he talks about making uh, uh, flights. Vaimanam, okay. you know, Vaimana Shastra. So there he talks about Mercury. Maybe you can refer that. No, actually, I I read one paper written by Professor H S Mukunda from I S C Bangalore. Yeah. Uh, he he has written a detailed scientific article uh, on this Vaimanika Shastra. Okay. Uh, okay, that is different story. He wrote it uh, from the scientific perspective. Yeah. Uh, and now my fourth question is: uh, You have mentioned you mentioned that uh, the rejuvenation or uh, this uh, uh, the. the temple sanctum has to be purified or uh, recharged at the interval of 12 year yes uh, now this is this 12 year of interval has a significant connection with uh, jovial year jovial cycle uh, okay. see jovial jovial year is uh, see jupiter takes one year to complete uh, uh, one to transit one sign and uh, it takes 12 year to complete a whole cycle suppose he, it started uh, from the aries at today then it will come to aries after 12 year mm-hmm. so jupiter is considered as a dev guru brihaspati and uh, his uh, returning should be considered as a auspicious okay uh, is it something like this or uh, something no, it, uh, uh, another significant i don't think it is uh, in connection with uh, jodial uh, 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 features like you say see normally we human beings we take a master health check periodically right so this is a built form and we have infused the divine energy inside the built form so that vibrations get disturbed with various reasons okay so we cannot wait for the jodial year the planetary position or planetary uh, period will not help us instead the material we use to build the temple and the agamic rituals the mantras chanting everything all these are connected to derive this 12 year in between you may ask me okay what happen if 50 year uh, i have i've got a problem in the temple constructions i have to rectify yes you can do so you have to do a lahu balalayam and perform that rectification and then reinstate the energy and that won't be done very ceremoniously you'll do it within the temple uh, uh, committee and other people but once in 12 year you will clear all the regular wear and tear and if there is any additions are you know uh, uh, you perform all those thing and you perform a maha kumbha abhishekam so that is how it will be reenergized it will be in full swing offering harmony and bliss to all coming to the temple yeah um, maybe a last question i don't think any yeah. is um 
I want to talk about the Somnath Temple. You mentioned yeah. uh, uh, Swayambhu Lingas. If I'm not wrong, uh, that is a Jyotir Linga, which means it is also Swayambhu. I'm not too sure. And it was destroyed multiple times, right? 17. Yes. So, uh, is it safe to assume that the the original divine energy in the Jyotir Linga would have been lost, and now the Linga that has been established is a Manusha Linga? And that uh, would that be safe to assume? No, it's not like that. It was renovated many a time due to many reasons, like uh, um, uh, uh, maybe invasions and uh, natural calamities. So many things are there, but the Jyotirlinga is replaced. If you are sure about it, then there should be a severe damage. So maybe the divine energy is transferred. to the newly made uh, uh, statue it is like when you go for an operation the doctor gives you an uh, anesthesia right and you don't know what is happening to you and the doctor will perform the operation he'll clear everything everything will be corrected later you will come out of the anesthesia feeling you'll get the conscious back it is like that so the deity's energy will be transferred and it will be reinstated to its old image or the new image if the old image is not uh, recommended for further worship it will be disposed and the new image will be there and the divine energy will be reinstated into it uh, okay 